In this video, we'll solve equations of the form a times x equals b, where a and b are known matrices, and x is an unknown matrix. So we're trying to solve for the entries of x that will make this equation hold. In this video, we'll focus exclusively on the situation where a is a square matrix, the same number of rows and columns although x and b might not be square matrices. But a lot of the ideas will pertain to situations where a is not a square matrix. Let's start with this example. a is a two by two matrix, and b is a two by three matrix. So if I wanna multiply a times x and get b, what dimension will x have to be? In order for the matrix multiplication even to make sense, x is gonna have to have two rows to match the two columns here of A. And in order to get the right number of columns in the output of B, X is gonna have to have three columns. I'm gonna call the columns of X, X1, X2, and X3, with that arrow to denote that they're column vectors. So we're looking for those column vectors so that A times x1, x2, x3 is equal to b. In a previous video on interpreting matrix multiplication, we saw that when we multiply a matrix by another matrix, we can accomplish that by multiplying the first matrix times each column of the second matrix separately and then just concatenating them together. So this expression a times the matrix with columns x1, x2, x3 is the same thing as a result matrix with columns ax1, ax2, ax3. And that has to equal b, which has columns 1, negative 1, 4, 2, 1, 1. So we know that we need ax1 to be the column matrix 1, negative 1, ax2 to be the column matrix 4, 2, and a x three to be the column matrix one one. Hang on a sec. We've seen how to solve these problems. This is solving a vector equation, right? A matrix times a vector is another vector. So all we have to do to solve this first problem is to augment a with this column vector one negative one and put it in row reduced echelon form to read off our solution. Here's my augmented a and to put that in reduced row echelon form, I can first leave the first row alone. It's already got a one in the upper left position. And I can get rid of this two by replacing the second row with negative two times the first row plus the second row. Then I can divide the second row by negative four. Finally, get rid of this three by replacing the first row with the first row minus three times the second row. Now I can read off the solution vector, x1 is gonna be the column vector minus five fourths, three fourths. Continuing, I need to solve a times x2 is a column vector for two. So I'll write down the augmented matrix and start to do the row reduction. Wait, this is starting to seem familiar. I seem to be going through exactly the same steps as I did before. And that makes sense because when I'm doing the steps of row reduction, I'm really focusing on this part of the matrix, trying to get this part of the matrix to have leading ones with, with zeros above and below them. This last column just gets dragged along for the ride. So I do get a different answer for my x2 column vector. It's gonna be negative one half, three halves. But the process I used to get there is the same as what I used for the first column vector. And if I move my attention to solving this third vector equation, I'll go through the same row reduction steps once again. So I have my solution, the matrix x1, x2, x3, otherwise known as x, is gonna be equal to my three answer vectors strung together, so that's negative five fourths, three fourths, negative one half, three halves, and one fourth, one fourth. But I also have 
an idea for how to do this process more efficiently. Instead of doing this row reduction process three times for the three separate vectors, what if I just string those vectors together and do the row reduction process once? So I'm going to augment A with all three of the column vectors of B. And I'll start applying the row reduction operations in one fell swoop. The first thing we did was to get rid of that two in the bottom left corner by replacing the second row with negative two times the first row plus the second row. When I do this, I maintain all the information that I had in the blue, green, and purple computations. These first two columns that corresponded to the original columns of A and are the same in the three computations are the same here. And then these last three columns are the same as those columns that I did in those three computations before. I can also do the next step of the row reduction in one fell swoop. And the last step altogether. When I solve the matrix equation in this most efficient way, I can read off my answer matrix X from the rightmost chunk of my row reduced matrix. Please pause the video and try your hand solving this matrix equation. I'm going to start by writing down the augmented matrix, A with B after it. I'll write down the steps of row reduction and leave it to you to verify the details. After doing that row reduction work by hand or by computer, we can read off our solution matrix X. I encourage you to check the work by actually multiplying A times X and verifying that you do get matrix B. I want to point out that the reason we could read off our answer matrix so easily is that after we did the row reduction, the part of our matrix corresponding to A is in a particularly nice form. It looks like an identity matrix with a leading one in each column and no rows that are all zeros. If we had gotten, for example, a row of zeros down here and some columns that didn't have leading ones in them, then we would have had to be more careful. And we might have ended up with no solution or infinitely many solutions. We'll talk more about those situations in class or in a later video. In this video, we saw that solving the matrix equation, A times X equals B, was equivalent to solving a bunch of vector equations, where the unknown vectors x1 through xn form the columns of the unknown matrix x, and the vectors b1 through bn form the columns of the known matrix b. But rather than solving each of these equations one by one, we saw that it was much more efficient to just augment the matrix A with the matrix B and convert that to reduced row echelon form.